Keys and Beats Summit at Musicians Institute. Uh, thanks to everyone for coming. My name is Stephen Fortner. I'm the editor of uh, Keyboard Magazine, which is a magazine about um, anything for which the black and whites are the interface, from um, jazz piano to uh, the sort of electronic music uh, created by our first guest, uh, Richard Devine, who um, in a fairly short space of time uh, ha has a uh, rocketed into the stratosphere as a sound designer. Would you would you recommend a, a hardware synth to someone as sort of a, um, a my first synthesizer to get to know the basic principles of how sound works? Some of the first machines that I bought were uh, was rolling equipment. <laughs> um, you know, we go to the, these pawn shops in, in Atlanta and uh, I was able to get uh, 808 drum machine, 909 drum machine. Um, my actual, one of my first synthesizers, um, analog synthesizers was an SH-101. SH and it was funny because those synths, those early synthesizers taught me the basis of a lot of things that I do now in sound design. Safely say, this is the SH-101, uh, the SH-101 of today, 2010. This is uh, kind of like three SH-101s with a bunch of effects and Pretty much, yeah. It blows yeah. away what my SH-101 could do, but um, this is an excellent, excellent, um, you know, keyboard to kind of start out with if you wanted to learn the basics of sound design and stuff. I, I use synthesizers a lot with, with a lot of my projects when I'm, you know, it's not all field recorded stuff. You know, people think when I go out and go record sounds, it's like, oh, we're going to go record a bunch of glass breaking and, you know, impacts and whooshes and stuff like that. But a lot of it is also using synthesis underneath some of the recorded sounds that I use because um, there's many, many layers that make up a sound that I might use in a, in a TV spot or, um, you know, or we've done some film scores as well. And um, it's creating that illusion that, that the sound has weight and volume and is dynamic. And a lot of times I, I layer layers and layers of synth synthesized sounds, whether it be sub-bass frequencies, um, or you know, modulated FM sounds to kind of get this ribbony effects. You get these really interesting textures that are almost they're difficult to get with with acoustically recorded sounds. But when you mix them together, you get this sort of like bigger than sort of life side of sound. And <clears throat> using synthesizers, um, you know, really helped me understand that because you learn about how to shape the sound. You learn about how to control the frequency of the sound for low to high pitch sounds. And um, you learned about how to use LFOs and understand even here on the Gaia, you have this a fairly simple setup um, of how you could just pretty much just start out with a sound and create pretty much any texture you want, whether it be ambient drones, strings, pads, um, bass sounds or leads. Um, and the, it's a really amazing starting point for, for people getting into synthesis and um, because all these same principles apply to when you're working out doing sound design. You know, they all play into a bigger context and, and it's a really good basic, it's a nice place to start out, you know, and it um, doesn't complicate things because you're not dealing with a thousand parameters and, and you know, like a like Cubase or Logic where you get lost and you're like, oh, my key came in and I opened up this window or something. And, and, and I, I should also say that I started out using analog synthesizers. I didn't start out using computers. Um, I didn't even start out using drum machines. A lot of people, um, f you know, assume already because my music's so beat driven that I started out using all, you know, drum machines right off the bat, but that's not true. My first, my first uh, two synths were an ARP 2600 and the SH-101. They were just synthesizers. Uh, they didn't generate any rhythmic sort of um, you know, beat patterns other than, you know, clocking LFOs and stuff like that. So, I mean, Compared to the SH-101, I didn't have the D-beam controller where I could control pitch and volume with my hand. Um, you know, you've got USB now so that you can hook it up to your computer and save and store and manage all your patches. And then you've got a really cool effects session, uh, section here. And then <clears throat> external audio in so you can run your iPod or your laptop into it and, and play along with it. It's, it's really, <clears throat> you know, if I would have had this when I was just starting out getting into synthesis, it would have been really, really awesome. It's, it's you know ten times the power of what what I had back then. Um, well, what's really cool about the the Gaia synth is you've got a lot of cool little uh, simple parameters here. You can see you have your LFO shapes and then the rate, which can also be tempo sync. So if you're working with your sequencer, it could all be in time, shifted and modulate in time. And what's cool, what I think is really cool, is this section here that they've added where you can actually <clears throat> change the values of the depth for your filter and your pitch and of course your amplification. So you can do these cool kind of tremolo pitchy effects and stuff and you can kind of hear some of that. That's how I'm getting uh, 
the twisting and turning up and down is using an LFO to kind of do the automation for me. Um, so it makes the sound uh, a bit more animated. Um, and of course, if I just put this, you can hear it's changing, the rate's changing. If I Completely changed it. Now it stopped. Stopped sort of automating. Then if I drive it up a little bit more, now it's changing the rate. And that's just a, a, a triangle wave. You can do sine, or you can do triangle, whatever shape you want. So it's kind of cool. It's just thinking in, uh, almost in ways of of like uh, sound sculpture. You know, you're just shaping the sound into the way that you want. And um, it's really, really cool. I'm, I'm really, uh, I find that really awesome that they stuck the LFO section immediately first because it just gets you thinking about how can I creatively control the sound, the frequency, the timbre of each one of these voices. Because um, usually when I find LFOs are at the end of the keyboard, they're never at the beginning. Yeah. So, I, you know what I mean? It's always yeah. like, oh, we're going to throw the, uh, the, the LFOs at the end after the ADSR section or after the envelopes. Um, but it just right, up, right off the bat gets you thinking gesturally, how can I control the sound in a different uh, in a different t way than just starting out with a basic tone or oscillator or you know PCM wave or whatnot, um, and I think that's really really cool that they've done this sort of knob fader combination. I love knobs and faders because um, you can see immediately all the settings right really quickly um, without even having to think about it. I know with a lot of my plugins and there there's so many sub menus that have such complicated parameters that I have to remember to hit the drop down menu to select. 50 other options, I'm like, wait a minute, I forgot. I could select this and I have 50 point break envelopes and all this crazy stuff, but this is nice because I can just really quickly um, just change things on the fly. Um, me, me coming from the DJ uh, end of things, this, is, this, this approach I find works much better for me because I can sit there and quickly shape the sound really fast. Uh, and quick hand gestures to get pretty much anything I want. Um, this is just another sound, it's just a very simple, um, <laughs> kind of like, Synth time uh, sound that I use basically just using sine, sine waves and then the filter section here. Um, and uh, the filtering, which is just a bandpass filter. But it's very simply laid out. This is just, it's like I said, it's not a complicated thing. It's um, very, very cool to understand mm -hmm. how, how all this gets put together. Every, there's no hidden, you know, no hidden menus on this at this point. Um, and then here, I'm just playing. This is just a. Sort of an ambient, sort of textured sound like you're inside a cave with like insects or something was kind of like what I was going for, but. Once again, for this for this particular patch, <clears throat> this is just like an like an ambient intro kind of patch, and I've just basically used a a noise generator, a white noise generator. It kind of sounds like you know the sound of wind or something uh, on on the uh, first tone. <clears throat> then on the second and third tone, I had these weird sort of I used the the LFO section to create these sort of random sort of weird pitchy little insect noises um, that are controlling the filter cutoff. See, it's, um, it's very flexible, and probably my favorite part of, of the Gaia synth that, that, that I've been having loads of fun with is the, the effects section here. Um, just being able to just grab the control parameter and get really nuts with it is really, really, really fun. Um, let me try to find it. If I could do this at the same time, but I'll just tweak it here, and you can hear the... Uh what effect is that? What, what effect is that? Now, all I'm using here for this effect is basically the the, the panning delay. Um, oops. Not that one. Uh, the panning delay um, effect, which is set up here, and I have a low, the low boost set on, and a flanger, which is cool, is you can run a combination of effects on here. Uh, I could throw even a distortion if I want, or a fuzz, or 
or bit crash, which is cool. It's kind of a low bit sonic decimating effect. Um, you can run them in any chain. You can flip them in any order. Um, and all I'm really doing on the panning and delay effect is I'm changing the de delay f uh, rate control. So it's shifting it to open up really open or it's closing it in really tightly. And I was just twisting it as I was playing, um, you know, stuff that I, you know, would do normally with plugins, but I can just automate it really quickly on this keyboard. But yeah, the effects sound really cool, kind of out of this world, kind of, you know, crazy stuff. So you can get some really, really interesting sounds um, out of this. Um, I was really, really shocked when I got it. I, I didn't know that it would be as in-depth as it, as it is, but it's a really, really cool instrument.